If you were to believe Hollywood disaster movies, then you might think the human race was lucky to wake up this morning. Meteor strikes, rogue pathogens, super volcanoes, shark tornadoes, all of these should have been the end of us by now, shouldn't they? Perhaps not, because according to one school of thought, mankind might have already conquered extinction. Starting at number 5, The Great Filter The theories of the Fermi Paradox and the Great Filter are most commonly discussed in the context of the apparent absence of alien life in the universe. The former tells us that according to probability estimates, we should have seen evidence of extraterrestrial beings by now. The latter, The Great Filter, tells us that the reason we haven't is because all civilizations must overcome certain barriers to survive in the universe. Many scientists have come to the conclusion that humanity is imminently approaching the Great Filter, with various technologies and troubles marked out as potential extinction threats. Climate change, atomic weapons, sitting on our fat butts all day, all have been suggested as the eventual cause of mankind's demise. But it's also possible that the Great Filter is already behind us. So if that's true, what was it? How did humanity almost die? Number 4. Improbable Life If single-celled and complex life had never developed on Earth, then it's unlikely humanity would have never existed to begin with. Pretty dank meme, right? And people say I'm not going down with the kids. <laughs> I sure showed them. The formation of simple life is one of the many great filters through which humanity's ancestors successfully passed. First, we wound up on a world with the right gases, plate tectonics, and a sweet salad bar. Then we lucked out in terms of our moon, nearby planets in proximity to our parent star. Change any of these things even slightly, and it could have been game over before the very first save point. We're still unsure how the first self-replicating molecules came into existence, as we've not yet found life elsewhere. We don't know just how rare this first step on the ladder of existence is. And that's before we factored in two billion years of waiting around for a single change to occur. At number three, the miracle Maltese. 3.5 billion years ago, Earth witnessed the formation of prokaryotes, simple, single-celled life lacking in a membrane-bound nucleus, mitochondria, or any table manners. Then, Earth saw complex single-celled life in the form of eukaryotes develop, and from there, multicellular organisms such as humans, llamas, dinosaurs, and peaches were able to evolve. But the gap between prokaryotes and eukaryotes was significant in more ways than one. For starters, it took place over 1.8 billion years. Your main course is that during this time, no evolution occurred. And for dessert, scientists say the likelihood of prokaryotes evolving into eukaryotes was infinitely close to zero. For 40% of the time our planet has existed, it was so devoid of activity it makes this fella look lively. According to probability, multicellular life should never have developed on Earth. This part of the Great Filter was far less likely to be passed than anything space or the weather could throw at us. And yet here we are. Well, after we won all those monkey wars, of course. At 2. Sapien Supremacy Today, Homo sapiens rule the planet. We make stuff, burn other stuff, and we can eat and pet any animals we want. But it wasn't always like this, and one of the greatest filters modern humans have ever overcome was our battle for supremacy on the real-life planet of the apes. When our ancestors Homo erectus evolved from Homo habilis and tried to leave Africa 1.9 million years ago, we were pretty pleased with ourselves. Look at us going out in the big wide world all on our own. 
Yet we shouldn't have been so cocky because 700,000 years later there were only about 26,000 of us left on the entire planet. Such a small population would have us designated as endangered today, with celebrities lining up to save us from extinction and celebrate our noble kind. Somehow we survived and split off into separate species. And this was another hurdle mankind had to pass. Our major rivals for the title of best monkey guy were the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, both of whom who were stronger and faster. With the Denisovans also more outgoing since they left Africa hundreds of thousands of years before we did. But it was Homo sapiens who came to endure. So why was this? How did we overcome our stronger and faster rivals? To put it simply, we banged them. Mm -hmm. We took on their good traits, made ourselves physically and genetically superior, and beat our rivals using our own baby batter. And their offspring became the modern humans we know and love today. And at number one, Earth hates us. Before all that monkey love, Homo sapiens were already more adaptable and capable of higher endurance than Neanderthals and Denisovans. These traits enabled us to exist in some of the harshest climates on Earth, and such genetic hardiness may have been what prevented us from dying out during the Earth's ice desert stage 150,000 years ago. During this period, Earth was cold and dry as both deserts and glaciers expanded. People drifted apart and formed communities wherever they could. And at the worst point, Earth's population may have dwindled to as few as 600 breeding humans. Those who did survive managed to do so due to their smart choice of location, South Africa. This area had food, it had a temperate climate, and it proved the savior of the modern human race. But Earth wasn't done with testing us just yet. 70,000 years ago, the Toba super eruption took place. So large was this event that it threw enough ash and debris into the air to dim the sun for six years. Seasonal rains were disrupted, water sources became polluted, plants failed to grow, and many delicious animals died out. Humans almost went into the eternal abyss along with them, with Earth's population believed to have been shrunk to between 1,000 and 10,000 individuals. But catastrophes like this proved our making. Humans are endurance specialists. When our numbers drop, only the best survive. Toba changed the entire ecosystem of the world overnight, but we met this challenge and became stronger as a result. The mass extinction and separation of human life created a series of worldwide bottlenecks that transformed our species. And over the following millennia, we not only persevered, we thrived. Our numbers grew, reaching a million 10,000 years ago, a hundred million around 1,000 BC, and one billion in the 19th century. Every volcano, earthquake, typhoon, or ice age which has sought to destroy us has not only failed, they've made us harder to kill. And as we continue developing from our origins, the probability of mankind's extinction reduces even further. We have overcome many great filters in our time. And as we develop new technologies in response to our violent universe, these filters become ever easier to pass through unscathed. But what filters might mankind have to pass through to survive in the future? Well, we're going to discuss this in our bonus video, The Biggest Threats to Humanity which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this, and indeed all of our bonus content which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool, we still love you, and we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll find out by watching our recent video which asks whether humans exist on other planets today.